I'm Lorian, and this is the Knitting End YouTube channel. This is episode five. Thanks for joining me today. It's Sunday, April 7th. <laughs> Tomorrow is eclipse day. Do you have your glasses? <laughs> I can't see anything out of these, so hopefully I'll be able to see something when time comes tomorrow. I happen to live in southwestern Connecticut and if the weather holds we will be in I think it's 92 percent coverage uh, with this solar eclipse tomorrow. So it's kind of all the buzz and the school where I work our it's a high school and our astronomy club is taking charge and hosting the festivities after school uh, because that's when our kind of peak coverage time should be. So I'm pretty excited about this. Um, I will definitely go on to the field where they're gathering and check things out. Um, I wasn't going to record an episode this week because frustratingly I don't have anything that's finished and it's really, really frustrating actually. Um, I feel like I've been working on the same two sweaters for too long and I have, for me, I've been working on two, basically the same two sweaters for the last month, a little bit more now, a couple of days over. And there's a reason for that, um, which I'll talk about when I get to each one of them. But first, let me talk about what I'm wearing. So this is the Oban cardigan. It's a cabled cardigan that is by Thea Coleman. It's one of my absolute favorite things to wear. I knit it in yarn from Knit Picks. I used Simply Wool Worsted. You can see it's definitely got some pilling going on. Um, one of the things I loved about it is it has pockets, it has buttons, and the pockets are really your swatch. You knit the pockets first. The cables, it's beautifully designed. The cables just work their way right into the pocket cables and into the ribbing in the bottom here. Um, and it's cabled in the back. Um, and I, I really love it. I feel like I don't have as many, I know I don't have as many cardigans as pullovers in my wardrobe. And I really think when I get through all of the pullovers that I'm planning to knit, I'm going to mostly work on some cardigans from time to time. So, um, and I feel like this is very kind of a flexible wear. So I can dress it up with a collared shirt. I'm wearing it with a t-shirt now. I just, I find, I find cardigans very cozy. Um, one of my favorite things about this is I love this seam, this sort of external exposed seam. I love that design element. Um, you cannot go wrong with anything from Thea Coleman. All right, let's get into what I've been working on. And you, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen these. You've seen these on at least the last episode of this YouTube channel, and you've seen these um, on my Instagram, which I should say, I am Yarn Love Turtle on Instagram and on Ravelry, and you can find this channel if you look that handle up as well. Probably even easier than Knitting And. So this is, um, it's folded because I am working the sleeves two at a time on Magic Loop. So you're gonna to have to imagine what it looks like, the other half of it, essentially. This is a top-down color work yoke and body, I guess the body goes below the sleeve divide, as you can see, sweater. It's designed by Jeanette Knits, and it is knit in sport weight yarns on a size two and two and a half needle is what the pattern calls for. That's pretty much what I needed to knit it on. Where do I begin? To start with, I love it. I'm really happy with the use and the utilization of the color changing yarns. I think it looks really pretty. I'm also happy to have used one 
main color for the top of the oak and this that's the cream and that is by uh, Botanical Shades it's their two ply sport it's a natural color and then the color changing yarn is by Yarn Hero it's the Merge Sport in the colorway Sweetheart and then the gray is a sport weight by Ravenwood Farms and I have all of these tags that I should be showing you. So Ravenwood Farm is this one and Botanical Shades is this one. And I don't have the tag for Yarn Hero because that the this, this Yarn Hero is a second quality and it did not come with the band. When I switch, so most of the color, the color work section is knit in a two and a half the top is knit in a two and the body is for the most part and the sleeves knit in a two. I decided it was looking very, very blousey and I was concerned uh, that I might have knit it too wide. And in, so I did a mid project block, which is something I talked about on episode four, when in doubt, block your project. Um, I'm so glad I did. I ended up getting the width out of the color work section. I got length out of the stockinette section and this fabric is spectacular, this gray. I'm very happy with it. I also was, I blocked it also, mostly you can actually kind of see where I stopped blocking the sleeves. So I had my sleeves on cords, on plastic cords, and I was concerned because they were starting to bell out once I had finished the color work. Uh, like I said, I knit this in, I knit this, my sleeves two, two at a time magic loop. But what I had done is I finished the color work of the body, paused, and then I finished the color work on each sleeve. So I was, I, it's not gonna be, it's not exactly a perfect match. It's good enough as far as the two colors lining up because I did not manage the color changing, like manage that yarn ball of colors. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I had enough of it, and I did. I had just pretty much enough. I also lost, I used three different, I lost three different Licka needles, uh, wood-tipped fixed circular needles in knitting this. They broke. It's not that I'm a tight knitter. It's that this sport weight yarn is very strong, and it's too strong, in my opinion, for my, for my tension still on wood. I really needed to use metal needles to knit this. And so I have replaced those, those needles with Chiao Gu with the red cord here um, in the sizes that I needed. I did also send my Lika needles back to Lika though. I want to see if they'll replace them. They do have a re return policy and these were not even a year old. I only had saved one of the damaged needles and I put in a claim for two. I will keep you posted. I think I have sent them something before and that they did ship it back to me, a replacement for one of my needle tips of my interchangeable needles. I love the feel of knitting with those needles. I just always have to remember, not with this small gauge, um, it's just too, it's too much for those needles to withstand. That's not really what slowed me down though with this project. What's really slowed me down is the mid-project block and just the fact that it takes a long time to knit on a size two needle. I have another project that is sort of a languishing whip that has been sitting on a size two needle and so I also needed to take that project off of those needles in order to access my size two needle. And I was being kind of lazy, but I did it. So. The thing now that I need to kind of work on is that while I'm knitting these sleeves, I probably have about four inches left to go because I know I'm going to get length in blocking once again. And I'm going to do, I pretty much knit everything to pattern. The only thing I did was I did the, you pick up for this collar. I did it before, it's probably like one of the last parts of the direction. I did it earlier in the process. I also knit the collar and the bottom ribbing in twisted rib. I just think it stands out a little bit more and I, I like the look of it for this particular design. Um, 
I'm very happy with it. I love it. And I actually am super happy with the color combinations. So I've decided that for me, cream and gray, like a medium gray and red, I'm going to be doing another sweater in that it come the fall in a worsted weight. Um, I don't think I have too much more to say. It's a beautiful pattern, well designed. I have knit a couple of Jeanette's other designs um, and, and been really happy with the results. I have not knit a sport weight design. She does have several intricate ones that are on these small needles. And um, to be honest, I breezed through the yoke it's really just been these long stretches of stockinette that <laughs> have kind of slowed me down. My second work in progress, which I also feel is taking me a bit longer. And again, I did a mid project block. Let me just find this because I, <laughs> I have two balls going. Oh, here we go. There it is. So this is the Whitmore sweater. It is a lace yoke design. Hopefully you can see that now. I think what stands out most are these like ribs in the middle. The pattern's designed by Amy Loudon and I am knitting this one in yarn from Foster Sheep Farm. It's called Claire's Quarry and that is a 72% Corydale, 28% Wensleydale DK weight yarn. I have admired yarns from Foster Sheep Farm for a couple of years and was just really waiting for the right project to knit with it. Um, so I am knitting, I, I, let me rewind. Um, I also, I did a mid project block on this because I did not want the lace the, the yarn overs in the lace color work here to be too large. And I wanted to make sure of that one, so I blocked it mid-project. Um, the project does not include short rows to raise the back neck. And for me, that is a necessity for fit. Um, for most designs, cardigans, raglans, circular yokes, I really like the back to be raised a bit. I don't like I don't like it when the back is as the same or lower than the front. Um, so, and many other design, oh, many other projects had added short rows. It's not in the pattern um, because this, you can see the pattern starts right after the collar. You could make the collar, you could add short rows in this ribbing, I suppose, but it'd be a lot of ribbing. So the other place to put your short rows are in the back under the yoke before you divide for sleeves. I forgot that and I had gotten maybe two rows beyond dividing for sleeves and I needed to go back and add them and I needed to sort of figure out how many rows and how far apart to make my turns. I did German short rows um, and, and I definitely added at least an inch and a half or close to two inches for this. So um, the only other thing is that for the yardage that I needed, Carol had two different dye lots. These are indigo dyed, and this, I think, was a sl the slightly next lot compared to all my other skeins, which this represents, the small ball now. I've been knitting them helically. I honestly don't see a difference. I didn't see a difference in the skein, and I will just switch to this skein when I run out of this ball. This is a DK weight sweater. It's moving much quicker, and um, I, I, so I've only been working on this in the last week, mostly when on my lunch break, which is a half an hour. So I have not put a lot into it. Um, I also just, so one thing that is happening with this yarn is it's crocking, which means it's running off into my, onto my hands. It's not doing it as I hold it, but it's doing it considerably as I knit with it. Um, it's not running on any of my clothes. It's not bleeding onto anything. When I blocked it, I did put some white vinegar in the dye bath, in the bath to soak. Nothing came off. And I spoke to Carol, who is the, uh, who is Foster Sheep Farm, 
And she was like, darn, I'm sorry that's happening. And what I think we've agreed that it is, is the natural oils or lotions that I might use on my hands are ca causing the color to come off. You don't see it running off on the fabric. Um, I'm totally fine with it. I'm going to probably wear a blue or a white colored shirt under this when I, when I wear this, maybe a t-shirt. I'm not worried about it coming off on anything else because it didn't come off on my blocking towel. Um, I really am convinced that it's just the natural uh, oils, etc., in my hands. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I love, I love the feel of working with this yarn. And um, I'm hoping to knit another sweater someday that I don't have the yarn for yet in Carol's yarn. Um, for the most part, what's left of this project is really just the stockinette body and the stockinette sleeves. The main, which I will do two at a time because there is there is no more uh, lace work. One thing that I did also was I decided that the lace work was coming low enough. There is one more pattern repeat of the lace and I decided not to do that repeat. I did put the increases that come with the chart in the body. So a few of the increases go into the body and the lace continues below the sleeve divide for this pattern for my size. I decided I just didn't need it. This was enough for this particular sweater. So I feel like this is going to be kind of a, a little a, close to a classic, close to a basic. Really excited about that. And soon it will be the only one I'm working on. Oh, the last, <laughs> I keep thinking of things. One thing that since I was concerned about the dye coming off on my hands, I actually switched to my blue, driftwood blue or indigo Luca needle tips. These are on an interchangeable um, set, but I have some blue ones and I thought maybe if the color is coming off, I should use the blue. It's not making any difference. <laughs> Let's see. What else? So those are my two works in progress. New stuff. I want to give away. <laughs> Someone asked me, what is my secret to giveaways? I don't really have a, a secret. I do think my, I used to have a different handle on Instagram and I do think I used to win more giveaways for some reason under that handle. Um, but I will say, I don't really enter giveaways from large providers. I feel like that's really hard usually. <laughs> to win, um, but I also like to support the small ones. So I entered a giveaway a couple of weeks ago that was by Tomato Moon. Her name is Laura. It says, Tomato Moon is, the, is a distillation of all the good things to tend and harvest in my life. Heart made food, working with delicious yarn and cloth and time spent with family and friends. Thank you for supporting my little venture. And I just think, I think her logo is adorable. And I won this project bag, which has the logo on it, um, has a strap here, it's a zipper top, and it has a pocket inside. And it's lined, it feels like it's also lined with um, like a slightly coated canvas. It's, it's very durable, it would stand up, it's a flat bottom, it would stand up on its own. And I, I'm sure it would hold the sweater's quantity of yarn. So thank you, Laura. I love this. Um, it's a really, really nice, beautifully made bag. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yesterday I went on a little adventure. Some of my local knitting friends, Debbie and Carla and I, went to New Jersey to visit... Um, couple of yarn shops to meet up with Shannon, my friend for uh, who has her own YouTube channel. If you are not yet watching her, it is under Whiskey and Wool. Um, some episodes are called A Knitter's Life and she just started a new format which I believe is cast on with me. Um, so because we were closer to where she lives, she was able to meet us for lunch that was really fun. Um, so we went to Basking Ridge, New Jersey for the reopening 
of Do You Knit uh, store. And um, it was absolutely delightful. I probably visited this store in its second location, I think it was, maybe eight years ago and was introduced to the whole world of indie dyed yarns and mostly had talk fiber, but a bunch of different yarns. And I was there on a weekend trip with my daughter who was there for a dance competition. And I had some downtime. I wandered into the shop and I went, even went back the next day and bought more yarn. I have periodically bought yarn from there over the years, either ordering by ordering by phone, um, once in a while maybe. I, I've definitely seen the team there at, uh, for several years they were at Vogue Knitting Live and had large booths. I visited one of their other locations and then because my friends were going back, I said, you know what, I'm in. Let's do this, let's celebrate. Um, and I went with a purpose, I went with a shopping list for yarns to complement a couple of yarns that I already had in my uh, stash. So, and I'm gonna show you the patterns also for the, so I just have to pull that up. Um, so, the first one that I was buying yarn for is the Calypso worsted sweater. Now I've already knit the Calypso, which is done in sport weight. This version is done in worsted or DK. And I already had some color changing yarns that I wanted to work with. I probably need about two skeins. I actually have a third, but it's kind of pastel in the same color. And this is dyed in the wool by Spin Cycle. I believe, and these are seconds, second quality. I believe it's the col their color Ranunculus. It was not an experimental color, um, but they're seconds. So that mean might mean there are slubs or odd bits in there that I probably will cut out when I'm working it up, but it's totally fine for my purposes. So that's gonna be the color changing part. And then I wanted to get a solid worsted and they happen to carry, I think this Gilead is the name of this yarn. And it is a French yarn, I think. Oh, goodness, it's all tucked in here. Let me pull this up. Yes, it's by Durerum, Durerum Natura, which is a French company. I think they have a story that I don't know. <laughs> um, and it is 275 yards or a little bit more, it's 250 meters. So just kind of picture those together. I'm really happy with that idea. So I was able to get three skeins. I needed 800 yards. I probably am just 830 yards. I think I'm just a little shy but I'll be fine. Um, so was really happy to find this. Um, let's see. It's, it's all in French, um, but it's made from Merino from Arles, the town of Arles, um, in, I think in the, uh, in Provence. I'm not gonna try to translate it. I do speak some French, but I'm not gonna try to translate it. Um, it was also super reasonably priced. So this is a worsted wool, non-super wash. I was really happy to find that. The other project that I'm working, that I brought some yarn for to try to see if I could get some additional yarns for is a project that my friend Shannon is doing and I have just been pretty, swept away by her project, completely enabled and influenced. And that is called the Chiaro Scuro Pullover. That is a pattern right here. It's a design by Carol Sunday. I have knit one of Carol Sunday's designs before and it brilliantly written, absolutely brilliant. Um, I knit a totally different design. It has lace work 
and in different parts of the sweater you use these three different lace motifs in different ways and it created this amazing garment. So heavily endorse this. Uh, I, I really I really love her her designs. Um, I had these skeins of dyed in the wool. So this is also spin cycle. Now these are super wash. These are super wash merino, I believe. 150 yards. These are sport rate. So they're very pastel. And I also, so I needed about the equivalent of eight, eight skeins of this. And I also wanted to use some yarns in my stash. I have this, have this, these are all sport weight and I have this. So you can see how these all might go together. And one thing about this store is you're greeted and they help you. They have amazing customer service. They help you find what you're looking for. And I went to and worked with um, Alana, who is who uh, is often goes live on Do You Knit's channel on Instagram. And I was like, you know what? I think she's gonna get what I'm asking for. And she found these skeins to go with it. And they are additionally uh, dyed, uh, dyed in the wool by Spin Cycle. These three additional skeins are in the colorway Ghost Ranch. They're all a little different. This one's quite different. It doesn't really have that peachy. It's not as peachy. Um, but I am really excited to work this up. I think it's, it looks, there are a couple of different ways this pattern can look. Um, this is one that the designer used Ghost Ranch in this version and it looks kind of scrappy. Um, the other version is more of a kind of gradiated wet play on the use of the color and I, I'm just, I'm loving this. So I'm excited to, to get into this one. I don't know if I will until I get started with some other things. I also don't know if I'll knit the worsted weight sweater um, before the fall, but I have the materials and I'm excited to be able to use some of the things that I already had in stash, even though I bought a few things to go with them. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think if I didn't mention, these are sport rate. They're 150 yards, or no, sorry, 200 yards per 50 grams. And I know I mentioned there, um, I believe they're Merino. 100% American wool, so they may not be Merino. Um, so it will be a blend, but I am I just think it's gonna be great colors for me. So I'm excited about that too. Okay. What else? Projects I'm excited to start. I have been planning a couple of different projects for a bit now. So one of the ones that I am going to start, and I am at a minimum going to finish that yoke meditation before I allow myself to wind and cast on, is the Milton sweater. This is a design by Hohi Locatelli. And I am using La Vienna May Sport, Marie, is it Merino? Marie Sport Nouveau, which is Superwash by Merino, and Little Kumo, which is a Surrey silk blend. This is a cardigan, so that's great. The other project that I am very excited to start is the Matryoshka Mittens. I'm going to show you a picture here. I have it in my queue. I just looked at it actually. Uh, okay, this is a colorwork mitten pattern by Eleanor Newman. And that's it. Now it's knit on very small needles. I believe it calls for a zero and a one. It has uh, a cable or maybe a faux cable. I'm not totally sure. I haven't read the pattern yet on the cuff. 
and a little bit of embellishment. You might be able to see the main doll here has some stitching over the top, which I'm sure you could, you could do or you don't have to do. Um, I saw these, I fell in love with them. Absolutely fell in love. I have a couple of color work mitts, but I don't have color work mittens for me. I've knit some and I've given them away. So the yarns I'm gonna use for that are this red, which is by Mitchell Wolko. It is their Targi fingering. This is from, I think this is a different year than what they're, they, they, I don't think they're currently selling this base. That's a picture of their farm. Um, and it's one of my favorite, favorite companies, 50 grams, 213 yards. And I'm going to pair that with this light oatmeal-y gray color which I bought on my trip to London, uh, fully with the intent of pairing these, this with this. That is from Gray Sheep Company, and it is their Hampshire four ply in the colorway oatmeal. So it's gonna be these two together. And um, can't wait to get started. I've been holding onto this red for something special, and I think this is really gonna be it. There is one other project that I am going to get started on we're keen to get started on and that is called tiny ribbon baby dress I have the yarns I just don't have them in reach um, I knit this as a baby gift for a friend of mine and that baby is now going to turn 14 years old this next week so let me show you and get a good picture okay I like that picture so this is what it looks like and it's, it's just very precious. There's only one size. Uh, it is designed in a cotton, which I don't think is what I knit it with originally, but it is what I'm going to knit it with. I'm actually gonna do the, t I don't have the, the yardage I have, I'm gonna do the top in a light pink and the bottom in white in a cotton bamboo in Lion Brand Kobu, which is just delicious. I have a, a tank, a summer tank in it. Um, this pattern is by Astrid Holding Silverstein. And I was, I had it in my printed patterns. Um, I don't even think I was using Ravelry at the time that I knit it as a gift. So a friend of mine has her first grandchild, it's a girl. And when she said, you know, I, I wanted to knit something, um, for better or worse, the tradition I grew up with was we don't really bring a lot of things into the house until after baby comes. And so right after the baby was born, I bought some, a couple of small gifts, but I wanted to knit something and um, I'm excited to do this for her. I don't really have many babies that I knit for, so this will be a lot of fun. Um, so that's three things that I have planned. Let me check. Okay, books. I finished my fifth book of the year. I finished reading, it's called The Little Liar. It's a book by Mitch Album, who is famous for doing Tuesday was with Maury and uh, The Five People You Meet in Heaven and a lot of other books that are quite popular. Um, the school where I work, the library, school library does a challenge every month and April's challenge in theme was that the title needed to include some version of the word lie, lies, lying, liar. Um, what was really delightful that I didn't quite realize when I picked up this book is that it takes place in Salonika, Greece. It is a Holocaust story. It is very, very sad. Um, and my ancestors, my dad's family comes from Salonika. So it was really interesting for me to learn a little bit more. It's a novel. It's not nonfiction, but there are some facts that are woven into the story. So it was really interesting for me to learn more about this town in Greece. Um, so I really enjoyed it. It was a very, very quick read. Um, and on to the next. Okay. I'm looking around. Oh, one thing I do want to show you, which I just forgot to grab, is that when I checked out at Do You Knit, I was given this canvas dyed 
tote bag. Their theme, if you're not familiar with them, their theme is pink. Never enough pink. And um, this is very in keeping with the colors of their logo and, and theme and yeah. So really, really a nice like quality bag, a thicker bag, which I appreciate. Um, so a couple of other things I just wanna talk about. Um, the first is when you visit a yarn shop. I, we visited two yarn shops yesterday and they were just really different experiences. Um, not just what they were carrying and certainly one was having a reopening, but we visited a second one and it took about five minutes for anyone who worked there to come over to us and say, hi, let me know if you need help. In fact, the person who said it didn't even like leave behind the door. They just kept winding some yarn. It wasn't very busy. They weren't with other customers. To me, I could spend a lot of money in your store if you're friendly, if you're helpful, if you're encouraging. And it was just kind of disappointing to experience that. Certainly, the other store we went to, Do You Knit, it was a, it was a big party, it was a very festive theme, but people came over, they offered to help us, they circulated, and um, I know certain store, you know, retail salespeople don't wanna be pushy, and I very much appreciate that, but it has happened to me in other stores, other, you know, well-known stores that um, for me, I just don't enjoy shopping when I'm not like greeted and I'm not offered, you know, help. Even if I don't need the help, if you need something, just let me know if you have any questions here to help. I'm just sensitive to that, I guess. Um, so in the second store, I walked out and didn't buy anything. Um, I had spent enough, you know, I had gotten what I came for at the first. There were beautiful things at the second and I might have had a different experience otherwise. I don't know. I don't, do you like to be left alone when you're shopping? I mean, I was there with some friends and one of them did buy a couple of things, but um, I think the experience could have been really different had we been engaged differently. So, oh, yeah, um, good for my wallet, I guess I'd say. Um, two, uh, three other things. So I've mentioned a few times, my projects feel like they're taking forever. I don't even feel like calling it Sleeve Island. Like I feel like I'm in the sleeve dungeon. I feel like it's kind of torturous right now. And it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, even though I know I have four inches. That's like, it's at least two more hours of knitting, probably more because it's such a fine gauge that I'm working. And like, what do you do? I, I don't, I, ha I have not let myself start something new. I really want to get through at least one of these two sweaters. I know the blue one is gonna work up faster once I devote more time to it. Um, some friends, you know, cast on something new just to sort of refresh. I, I project plan. So I, I just showed you some of the projects, the projects that I am hoping to get started on. I may want to get started on the Calypso Worsted also, which if I didn't mention is a, pro a pattern by Black Cat Knitting Company. Um, not sure. It's tempting because it should be quicker because it's the worsted. Um, so that is sort of keeping me going. I obviously spent some time caking those yarns but I'm not letting myself start something else. Um, I would really, really love to, I also would like to wear the Yoke Meditation to the Connecticut Sheep and Wool Festival, which is, happens to fall on local yarn store day, I think, nearly every year. It is the last Saturday in April. It is held in North Haven, Connecticut, which is not too far from my house. And I believe some, one of the vendors of at least the vendor of the gray yarn is scheduled to be there. So I would really love to have it finished for them. So I am gonna keep keep going and hopefully the next time I record, I'll be wearing that one. But what is it, what what do you find helps keep your motivation? Um, I can, I'm at the point where I can read and knit and I have started my next book. 
So that can kind of help, but it's just, it's just a bit slow going with some of the knitting I'm doing right now. Um, I'm sure the blue one will be faster once I also stop the helical knitting, which doesn't make it that slow. It's just you have to pick up, put down versus just charge ahead. Um, Advents. I put a question up in my Instagram stories asking if anyone had um, made any Advent purchases and I got a few responses. Um, I'm gonna look on my phone because I took a picture of them. Okay, so definitely some folks had ordered Ruby and Roses, uh, maybe Polka Dot Creek Christmas in July. I was asked if I had any suggestions. Um, one friend said she was waiting to see what I was ordering um, another friend said maybe she would get something from Florence Sperling Studios and see what she is doing. I don't know. She did this collaboration with Ching Fiber. I don't know what Florence has done from year to year. I believe she'll be having a baby sometime, probably before the end of the year. So I'm not really sure. Um, I did enjoy the project that that, uh, that, that advent became. Um, another friend said Legacy Fiber Arts. Um, let's see. Another friend said, nothing. I hate the unknown. I need to see and touch before buying yarn. And I totally get that. I only purchase yarn in person. And then another friend said they had ordered the Freckled Whimsy Advent Sock in the DK. I placed my order for that as well. I enjoyed that this past year. I felt that it knit up pretty quickly. I liked, I do like wearing those socks. Um, and I just thought it was a lot of fun. I liked the color. So I did order that skein so far. I'm up in the air about what else to order. Um, I, I don't think, I'm not sure I will get a 24 day mini skein calendar uh, or that many. I might go for something with two. Uh, and I've been looking at those that have some non-superwash options. Uh, Zakami Yarns is a great example. They have some beautiful bases, many of which are non-superwash. They even have like a Surrey only base, which could be fun. I'm just not sure yet. I'm holding out. I also last year ended up making my own. I found some mini skeins on sale from Cornbread and Honey and ordered them, asked for a mix, and my husband just put them in bags that I had left over from prior advents. So we shall see. Um, I also have not knit up, I have not knit those up this year. So that's also making me feel less, I don't know, less festive right now, <laughs> less motivated to go out and buy more. Although I do plan to use them sometime, maybe this summer. The last thing that I had on my list was I thought I would show you um, a new craft, I guess, that I took a class in just today. Um, my One of the local nurseries, garden centers, was offering a soap making class. And on a whim, I signed up. I have always been interested in soap making. I love natural soaps. Um, I love this. I love naturally scented soaps, and I don't love ones that smell like food unless it's citrus. I don't like my body to smell like a cake, but I do love like natural scents, like nature type scents. Citrus, like I said, is okay. Almond is a little bit okay. Um, so I took this class. It was very small. There were four of us in it. It was run by. Uh, Tiara Soaps, her name is Addie, um, and she was just adorable. We did a cold process soap, um, and we were able to choose color, choose scent, choose any add-ins. So I, we did two, and you could do two of the same, or you could do two different. I chose to do this one. Now this is scented with eucalyptus. I chose a purple color, but it also has purple clay to give it some texture. And these little flowers are chamomile flowers. So it needs to sit in these little metal tins for another two days. Then you slice them with a kitchen knife into bars. She said four, but I don't know. I feel like I could probably get five out of this. 
and then it needs to sit for two weeks. The second one that I did is, I'm just smelling it. I, I, flea, I get used a scent of orange blossom. Orange? Orange blossom, I think so. Citrus. Um, I added oatmeal that was ground up and I also added oats. So those are mixed in with the soap itself and then on top are calendula flowers, petals and flowers. So it was a lot of fun. It was quick because she had done all of the mixing. So it was an oil base, a blend. She didn't give us the recipe, <laughs> even though I tried to ask for proportions. She kind of said you should go online, trial and error, figure out what you like. Um, but it was a lye bath, L-Y-E, which you use lye and water, and then oils. And then she poured those the lye into the oils, and that started the emulsification process. Um, and then from there, each of the four of us made our own blends uh, or mixes. So, um, so stay tuned because when it comes time to cut them and then use them, I'm excited to see how they look sliced um, and, and go from there. They're really quite firm. They're pretty firm now um, and highly fragrant. So I think that is a wrap for today. Like I said, I didn't think I'd have much to talk about without any finished projects, but um, clearly I've been able to provide a pretty, a pretty good showing here today. Um, I think that's going to be it. Yeah. So take care. I will be back soon and hopefully we'll have some finished knits next time. Um, yeah. Tell me about if you're, if you're in the path of the eclipse, if you're going to be watching it at all, if, um, about your experience in different yarn stores and, um, what you're excited about knitting coming up. And if you ever get into sleeve dungeon or just feeling like your projects are slogging along and what you do when that hits. I will see you soon. Take care.